Hey guys, this is Clinton Jeff and today I'm super excited because we are checking out the next evolution in the Adidas 4D midsole today with the brand new Adidas 4D Forward or Adidas 4D FWD to be official. This shoe represents a huge step for Adidas into positioning their 4D midsole as made for runners. And there's a lot to like about this shoe. Let's check it out. Alright guys, first step, if you're liking what you're seeing so far, please consider hitting that subscribe button right below just in case you haven't yet. Or if you're into sneaker reviews, maybe give me a follow on Instagram at Clinton Jeff. Really helps out a small creator like me. The Adidas 4D Forward dropped this May 15th at a price of $200 in the US, which is pretty much the usual price for 4D sneakers lately. The drop was in limited numbers while there will be another limited edition colorway dropping in July to celebrate the Tokyo Olympics before this goes in general sale in August. This particular drop came only in this one colorway called the Core Black Solar Red and it dropped in really limited numbers. I'm guessing Adidas still wanted to get some feedback on this midsole before really mass producing it or maybe it just takes them longer to make this midsole sort of how 4D midsoles were at the start and that is the big deal about this shoe that 4D midsole with a new lattice design when you look at it from afar it might appear to be the same as earlier 4D midsoles that we've seen from Adidas for a few years now but as you get closer to the shoe you'll notice that the midsole has a brand new 4D lattice pattern one that Adidas says is 23% more cushioned and generates three times as much forward motion as previous 4D patterns. And it's all to position the 4D forward as a running shoe. We've seen Adidas try to push earlier 4D shoes as running shoes before. We saw it with the Futurecraft 4D and the Alpha Edge 4D first, a shoe that still looks awesome even today. We've even seen Adidas attempt to make a cheaper 4D running shoe with the mass produced Adidas 4D Run 1.0 last year. But none of these shoes were really well received as running shoes. In fact, I feel like people only bought them to wear as casual everyday shoes. And that's what led to Adidas bringing 4D to a few of their lifestyle silhouettes, like the Adidas ZX4000 4D, or the more recent Adidas 4D Fusio that dropped earlier this year. But Adidas is hoping to change that perception of 4D with this new meant for running silhouette called the Adidas 4D Forward. That new 4D pattern, as I mentioned earlier, is supposed to generate forward motion, pushing you forward, hence the name of the shoe. So does that new 4D pattern and that knit upper make this a good running shoe? Let's start the review. Starting with the box, it's your usual black Adidas performance box. It's pretty plain and simple, so there's nothing much new here, which I have to admit is kind of a bummer. I thought they'd at least improve on the black Adidas 4D boxes for this one, but I guess they didn't want to. There's just the shoes wrapped in paper and that's it. I mean, this is a running shoe after all, so I didn't expect much. Coming to the shoe itself and starting with the upper, the entire black knit upper of the shoe is made from Adidas Prime Knit Plus, which is made from 50% recycled materials on the shoe. Adidas calls these high performance recycled materials Prime Green. In fact, there's actually no virgin polyester on the shoe, which is awesome, way to go Adidas. The upper is a one piece booty like construction for a sock like fit, and it feels just as stretchy and comfortable as what I've experienced with the Alpha Edge 4D, starting from the toe box. You'll see this almost ultra boost arrow shaped knit pattern on the toe box here. The knit pattern does change in this area to give more structure around your toes, whereas it's more breathable at the top. The front of the shoe has a thicker, harder knit and this tiny bit of rubber outsole extending upwards onto the upper, all to protect your toes in case you bump into anything. Since it's a one piece booty construction, that knit upper extends all around the shoe with a few heat press details around to give the shoe more structure. Coming to the midfoot area, you'll just see the three Adidas stripes in this 3M reflective material. The knit in the midfoot area also seems to be slightly harder, just to give this area more reinforcement. In fact, the knit seems to get more rigid as you go towards the back of the shoe, which is a combination of the internal heel counter and also to help with fit and ensure that there's a proper heel lock here. Coming to the top of the shoe, you'll see these bright red lace loops that extend out of the upper. This area is reinforced with these gray panels around the lace loops to prevent the knit from any wear and tear here. Weaving through those lace loops are these flat black laces 
which seemed comfortable enough on feet. I should mention though that the laces are really, really long, which is something that Adidas tends to do a lot. Personally, I'm okay with that, but I know it's a pet peeve for a lot of you all out there. So you might want to relace these with shorter laces. I have to admit though, I was disappointed not to see any 4D forward branding on the lace tips. Coming to the top of the tongue, or a lack of a tongue since this is a one-piece upper, there's the Adidas performance branding in that bright red color on a dark gray panel. And above that, you'll see this elastic collar that again feels very similar to the Alpha Edge. Coming to the inside of the shoe, there's no sock liner as such, since there's just a knit upper itself. But you'll see this inner lining, which is a skeletal structure on the inside of the upper, in order to give it more structure around your feet. Otherwise, the shoe would be too sock-like, which would make them way too hard to run in. There's a bit of padding towards the back to make these comfortable on your ankles, but also to help with heel lock. Coming to the bottom, there's a bright red insole with the Adidas 4D forward branding printed on in black towards the heel area. And then coming to the back of the shoe, you'll see the knit incorporates that bright orangish solar red color with this lip that extends up the back and acts as a pull tab. This area is further reinforced with this perforated Nubuck panel with the Adidas 4D forward branding underneath. I have to say that I love that they use the fast forward symbol here for forward. That whole lightweight upper sits on a full length 4D midsole. Now we've seen 4D midsoles for a while now, so I won't go into too much detail on them. I have a separate video that I can link to in the description in case you want to find out more about the Adidas 4D midsoles. But just to give you the gist of it, this midsole is 3D printed from a liquid polymer that uses oxygen, lasers, light and heat to harden it up before it's pulled out of a liquid vat. Which sounds crazy, but it's actually true. The result is this cool lattice structure that you see, making it probably the most unique midsole out there. But with the 4D forward, it's not just any old 4D midsole used here. In fact, this is the first major change for the 3D printed midsole since it debuted back in 2017. Adidas worked with their partner Carbon, the creators of the 4D tech, to create an entirely new 4D printed midsole design, which incorporates a unique property of physics where the forward cell shape translates vertical impact forces from a runner's downward step into forward momentum. And that's where the shoe gets the name from. The 4D forward has been designed to move runners forward, something that has been approached differently on the Ultraboost 21, which is more meant for casual runners, and the Adi Zero Adidas Pro, which is more meant for elite runners. The Adidas design team apparently spent 18 months trying to think of ways to make every run feel like progress, and in the process, they created five different versions of Adidas 4D cushioning, ultimately landing on this new bowtie-shaped cell. In fact, compared to previous 4D implementations, the 4D forward lattice system by Carbon also features 23% more cushioning while delivering three times as much forward motion. The forward cell's shape shares forward, redirecting vertical impact into that forward motion. What this basically means is that as the lattice is compressed, instead of just bouncing back up, it moves forward diagonally, like as if you landed on a surface at an angle. There's even a high midsole drop to complement the lattice structure, which enables runners to move faster and smoother. The Adidas 4D forward has a 11.3 mm midsole drop, which is 21.2 mm under the forefoot and 32.5 mm under the heel. All right, all right, so now that you heard about it, how does this feel? Well, we'll talk about that later on in the performance section. As if all of that wasn't enough, Adidas has also taken sustainability into account here and the new lattice structure is comprised of 39% bio-based material, which is awesome. And lastly, coming to the bottom, there's that orangish red rubber outsole that doesn't say continental, but feels similar in terms of thickness and traction. It's been pretty rainy weather here in KL for the last couple of weeks and the shoe held on great, but it's always strange to see such a highly priced running sneaker from Adidas not featuring continental rubber. The design of the outsole seems to be pretty plain and simple compared to what we've seen on the Ultra Boost 21. But it's similar to what we've seen with 4D sneakers before, here with a traction pattern that consists of geometric lugs and cuts. Since the 4D midsole is porous, that outsole has to be perfectly opaque so that dust or dirt doesn't travel up from the outsole into the 4D midsole. All in all, the Adidas 4D Forward does look like a more aggressive take on your usual Adidas running shoe. While it's a knit upper, there's an internal structure to keep it secure as you run around with these. But apart from diehard fans of Adidas, most people won't be able to notice that this is a new take on 4D midsoles, just in case that's the main reason why you're buying this shoe. That's about it in terms of design, let's move on to fit and sizing. Yo, in terms of fit, these shoes fit large. I'm a size UK 11 and because I have really wide feet, I went up a half size to UK 11.5 which turns out was a big mistake because these fit a little loose. My advice would be to go down half a size with these sneakers if you have regular narrow feet, but if you have wide feet like I do, then maybe go through to size here. Now, unfortunately, these aren't in store, so you can't try on a pair, but getting the right size is really important here 
to prevent a sloppy fit and heel slippage. So my advice would be to try on a pair of Alpha Edge 4Ds if you can, since the fit is a little bit similar. All right, so now that we got design and sizing out of the way, let's talk about the most important part of the shoe, the reason why you're probably considering copying these. Let's talk about performance. Now in terms of cushioning, like I said earlier, this is definitely the softest 4D that Adidas has made to date. I mean, it's still 4D though, so it's still somewhat hard and nowhere as soft or reactive as Boost. I would say this is similar to mid-tier sneaker EVA foams. So don't expect too much in terms of bouncy cushioning out of the shoe. It's kind of similar to the Adidas Light Strike foam that we saw in the Adidas SL20. But coming to that whole redirecting vertical impact into forward motion bit, I have to say guys, I really bought into the whole Adidas marketing and their awesome videos. So I got my hopes up really high with these. And I mean, who can blame me? Adidas even said that this is the future of running and that they combined over 17 years of athlete data with advances in technology, design and sustainability all just to create the shoe. But ultimately, unfortunately, I have to say, they don't really deliver the kind of promise that the Adidas marketing train has been pushing, at least not entirely. The forward momentum is there, but it's not quite as pronounced as all of the Adidas awesome marketing videos make it out to be. The new 4D forward bow tie lattice structure is supposed to propel you forwards, converting the braking forces of your downward stride into horizontal forward motion. And with that theory in mind, this shoe is best meant for heel strikers like me, who will gain the most benefit from this propulsive midsole. I wore the 4D forward on my daily runs over the last two weeks, most of which were about 60 minute recovery runs. And even though I as a heel striker should have gotten the most from this midsole technology, I have to say I did notice it a little, but it wasn't really anything breakthrough in terms of design or anything dramatically different from a standard running shoe with a rocket design, for example, which would help you to move through your foot strike. Take for example, the Adidas Ultra Boost 21, which has a rocker shape, but performs similar. This is also a relatively flexible shoe overall and not as torsionally rigid as the Ultra Boost 21 was. The midsole design really does help with motion quite a bit. The overall ride is definitely unique in how it feels and transitions are smooth, but just not as radical as what you've experienced with a super plush or super bouncy foam cushioning. Instead, it's a more mellow natural ride with a pretty decent amount of cushioning. As such, instead of getting that responsive feeling of crushing a foam down and then having it bounce back up, the energy return here feels more moderate and distributed. The lack of that snappy response, coupled with the weight and the knit uppers hold on your foot, makes me think that these are more suited for recovery runs at a mellow pace. That being said, I want to be clear though, I'm not saying that this is a bad running shoe at all. I'm just saying that the effect of the new midsole is pretty muted and there are plenty of lighter shoes that offer similar rides for less money. I feel like the blame for all of this lies with the Adidas marketing train that made these shoes seem like they would have a huge dramatic difference when in reality it's there but it's somewhat muted. On the bright side, when you do run with these, you do feel very in control of your stride. I feel like the advantage that the 4D forward midsole has is that it kind of reports every step back to your feet so that you know how to react well on a run accordingly, if that makes sense. In my mind, the Adidas 4D forward is still a proof of concept which exists to indicate the direction that the 4D midsole is going in and where it might reach someday. In the meanwhile, the other Adidas foams, from Boost to Light Strike and beyond, might all be relatively older technology, but still have impressive performance and are highly durable. On that note, I should also point out that Adidas said that the 4D forward midsoles should last as long as other shoes. So if you're actually going to use these for running and you're used to hitting a certain mileage with your other running shoes, you could expect a similar lifespan from this 3D printed midsole as well. I'm also going to assume that these won't bottom out as fast as Boost midsoles tend to after a while. All right, apart from that, the 4D midsole extends quite wide on both sides of the forefoot and the heel area, which helps with two important things. First, since the upper is a knit, there's still a small chance of your foot sliding off the footbed, especially near the forefoot area, but that is now mitigated by how far the midsole extends so that you get more support than most other running shoes with a knit upper. And secondly, this helps create a sort of natural outrigger action coupled with that solid internal heel counter. The shoe is also somewhat heavy, I mean, it's lighter than any previous 4D shoe, partly because the lattice is more open and the advancement in the materials used, but it's still somewhat heavy for a running shoe. For example, it weighs 333 grams for a UK size 8.5. With that in mind, I really feel like the Adidas 4D Forward is best used as an everyday training shoe, something you can just throw on for your everyday jog. Not really meant to be a speedy race shoe or even a marathon long distance shoe at all mostly because of that weight, but also because of that stack height coupled with the cushioning. All right guys, I know this was a long one, but with all that out of the way, let's take a look at the Adidas 4D Forward on feet.
That was the Adidas 4D Forward. I have to admit, I really got my hopes up for this shoe. And while it's still a fairly good running shoe, I just feel like my expectations were raised way too high. But the thing is, at the price, the Adidas 4D Forward just really needed to be really impressive because it's up against a lot of running shoes that use foam cushioning or carbon fiber plates or combinations of different materials to deliver similar energy return and comfort. The Adidas 4D Forward, meanwhile, feels like a shoe that's more meant to be used for short running sessions, better suited for someone going on 3 to 5 kilometer casual daily runs, definitely not a racing shoe at all, and definitely not something you'd want to wear for a long distance run. You'd also definitely not want to wear a 4D shoe on an off-road trail run, just because tiny stones or other objects might get stuck inside the 4D and mess things up quite bad. So at the end of the day, the Adidas 4D Forward will work fine as a solid running shoe. It just isn't really dramatically different from other foam-based running shoes that we've seen before. But at the very least, you're getting an aggressive looking running shoe that is comfortable, sustainably made, and with a midsole that is almost guaranteed to start a conversation from inquisitive other people who notice it. But does that make it worth the price tag? I'm not entirely sure. That being said, the 4D Forward definitely does represent a major step in the evolution of running shoes. If you're looking for something that's comfortable but a bit more serious than the Ultra Boost 21, but less elite or sporty than the Adi Zero Adidas Pro, then picking these up might make sense. All right guys, so that's what I think about the Adidas 4D Forward. I'm really interested to know what you guys think about the shoe as well. Is the 4D hype completely dead? Or do you think this is a good direction forward for it? Also, are you thinking about picking up a pair of the Adidas 4D Forward? Let me know right in the comment section below. Of course, if you want to see more photos of the Adidas 4D Forward, you can check them out over on my Instagram and maybe give me a follow at Clinton Jeff. And hey, if you thought this video was helpful and you want to support the channel, don't forget to hit the like button right below and maybe subscribe because that would be massively appreciated. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.